Nellie Cashman was among the first female entrepreneurs of the Old West, known for her roles as a prospector and a compassionate figure. Roaming the mining camps scattered across the frontier, she sought her fortune while earning a reputation for her acts of charity, bravery, and unwavering resolve. Ellen, affectionately known as Nellie, was born in Queenstown County, Cork, Ireland, in 1845, to parents Patrick Cashman and Frances Fanny Cronin. Tragedy struck early in her life when her father passed away when she was just five years old. Along with her sister Fanny and their mother, they emigrated from Ireland to the United States during the Potato Famine. Initially settling in Boston, they later moved to Washington, D.C. It was in Washington where Nellie found her first job as a lift operator in a hotel. There, amidst the hustle and bustle, she often caught snippets of Civil War politics. On a memorable occasion, she even crossed paths with General Ulysses S. Grant, who encouraged her to venture out west. It seems that following Grant's counsel, the family journeyed to San Francisco, California, sometime between 1865 and 1869. Fanny promptly tied the knot and started her own family. Meanwhile, an adventurous Nellie, captivated by the tales of the gold rush out west, quickly found work as a cook in different Nevada mining camps, such as Virginia City and Pioche. After saving diligently, she established the Miner's Boarding House at Panaka Flat, Nevada in 1872. She earned a reputation as a steadfast ally to the miners, frequently offering them meals and shelter even if they lacked funds. In retrospect, Cashman was hailed as lovely as a Victorian cameo and, when the situation demanded, tougher than nails. Indeed, she lived up to this description. These Nevada mining camps were among the earliest where Cashman ventured, always initiating a business dabbling in prospecting on occasion and caring for the miners' well-being. In 1874, upon the gold discovery in the Cassier Mountains of British Columbia, Canada, Nellie teamed up with 200 Nevada miners journeying northward. At Telegraph Creek, she established yet another boarding house for the miners. Once more, she attended to their needs, offering assistance whenever required and tending to them during sickness. As a devout Catholic, Nellie initiated fundraising efforts for the Sisters of St. Anne and Victoria to construct a hospital. Grateful for her compassionate care, they readily extended their support. Later on, Cashman journeyed to Victoria to deliver $500 in donations, contributing to the construction of St. Joseph's Hospital by the nuns. While in Victoria, she learned of 26 miners stranded in a snowstorm in the Cassier Mountains. Without hesitation, she mobilized a rescue mission with six men and several pack animals laden with 1,500 pounds of supplies. They embarked on the expedition to locate the stranded men. Despite the treacherous conditions, the Canadian Army had declined to undertake a rescue. Upon learning of Cashman's efforts, the commander dispatched troops to retrieve her and her team safely. However, upon their arrival, she steadfastly refused to leave without the stranded miners. After 77 grueling days, sometimes trudging through snow as deep as 10 feet, she eventually located the men, who turned out to be more than the rumored 26, numbering over 75. Afflicted by severe scurvy, she supplemented their diets with vitamin C and tended to their recovery. Following the decline of the Cassiar strike, Nellie journeyed to the silver fields of Arizona in 1879. Initially settling in Tucson, she established the Delmonico restaurant, becoming the first woman to own a business in the town. Despite frequently providing food for free to the hungry, her restaurant thrived. However, her stay in Tucson was brief. In 1880, she sold the restaurant and ventured on to the burgeoning town of Tombstone amidst the new silver rush. Upon reaching Tombstone, she initially operated a boot and shoe store for a short time before launching the Russ House restaurant. According to a widely circulated tale, during one instance when a patron criticized Nellie's cooking, Doc Holliday happened to be there. When Holiday drew his firearm and demanded the customer to repeat his complaint, the embarrassed individual quickly amended his statement, praising the food as, the best I ever ate. She persisted in her efforts for the Catholic community, gathering funds for the construction of the Sacred Heart Catholic Church in Tombstone, while also serving as a nurse. Prior to accumulating sufficient funds for the church, she persuaded the proprietors of the Crystal Palace Saloon to permit Sunday church gatherings on their premises. 
In addition to supporting the Salvation Army, the Red Cross, and the Miners Hospital, as well as aiding any miner facing adversity, she quickly earned the moniker Angel of Mercy. When her brother-in-law passed away in 1881, Nellie urged her sister, Fanny, who had five children, to join her in Tombstone. In December 1883, a group of five robbers carried out a heist in Bisbee, resulting in the deaths of four individuals. Dubbed the Bisbee Massacre, the authorities swiftly pursued the perpetrators. Apprehended and brought to trial in Tombstone, the men were slated for execution on March 8, 1884. However, the town soon adopted a festive atmosphere, with complimentary tickets distributed for the occasion. Yet, when Sheriff Ward exhausted his supply, an entrepreneurial local constructed bleachers around the gallows and commenced selling additional tickets. Nellie strongly opposed the spectacle that surrounded the proceedings. Appalled by the behavior of the townsfolk and believing that no loss of life should be glorified, she quickly formed bonds with the five inmates, frequently visiting them and offering spiritual support. She urged Sheriff Ward to impose a curfew on the town during the executions. Ward relented, resulting in the exclusion of the majority of curious spectators from witnessing the event. Following their execution, the men were laid to rest in Tombstone's Boot Hill Cemetery. However, Cashman learned of a scheme to exhume their bodies for a medical school study. Infuriated by this, she took action and enlisted two prospectors to stand guard over the graves for ten days. Thanks to their vigilance, the graves remained untouched and can still be found at Boot Hill today. In the same year, amid a labor dispute, a mob of miners tried to lynch mine owner E.B. Gage. Nellie intervened fearlessly, driving her buggy into the crowd and rescuing Gage. She swiftly escorted him to safety in Benson, Arizona. Upon her return from an unsuccessful gold venture in Baja, California, Nellie faced another challenge when her sister, Fanny, a widow, succumbed to tuberculosis. This left Nellie responsible for raising Fanny's five children. In 1886, Nellie sold the Russ house and departed Tombstone with the children. They journeyed across various locations in Arizona, including Nogales, Jerome, Prescott, Yuma, and Harqua Hala, where Nellie established restaurants and engaged in part-time prospecting. Later, she ventured to mining camps in Wyoming, Montana, and New Mexico. Despite the constant movement, Nellie ensured that all five children thrived and became successful contributing members of society. When the Klondike Gold Rush kicked off in 1898, Nellie ventured to the Yukon. In Dawson City, she established another restaurant and mercantile, offering assistance to miners as needed. In 1904, she relocated to Fairbanks, where she opened a grocery store. Amidst her business ventures, she also acquired claims in the region, working on them whenever possible. Eventually, Nellie found a sense of permanence in Victoria, British Columbia, settling there in 1923. However, in January 1925, she succumbed to pneumonia in the very hospital she had helped build, St. Joseph's. Due to her generous nature, Nellie gained widespread recognition across the West, with her eulogy even published in newspapers as far as New York. Although she was small in stature, often wore masculine clothing, and remained unmarried throughout her life, she made a lasting impact as one of the trailblazing female entrepreneurs in the Western frontier. Alongside her endeavors as a miner and a compassionate figure known as an Angel of Mercy, she acquired numerous nicknames in the mining communities where she worked. These included the Frontier Angel, Saint of the Sourdoughs, Miner's Angel, Angel of the Cassier, and the Angel of Tombstone. Nellie Cashman was honored with induction into the Alaska Mining Hall of Fame on March 15, 2006.